Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord be with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O Father in heaven, bless our pristine country which you have given us, and bless the government of the day. Give them the help and strength that they need to govern. Help them to acquire the wisdom of Solomon when he ruled. I ask once again tonight to bless all the little children, the sick, the disabled, and the elderly in our midst. Send down the Holy Spirit to guide and protect them as they need your help and guidance. I know that anything and everything is possible because you are the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen. Now to my social comments. Tonight I chose Solomon chapter 8 verses 2 to 16 because of what is taking place in our beloved country. We all know that our government has found a country that was devoid of money in the different ministries. Therefore, they need Solomon's guidance and acumen in order to develop this country for those to come. And now I quote from Solomon, the, the quoting from Solomon has been my love. And I courted her when I was young and wanted to make her my bride. I fell in love with her beauty. She glorifies her noble origin by living with God, the Lord of all who loves her. She is familiar with God's mysteries and helps determine his course of action. It is good to have riches in, in this life. Nothing can make you richer than wisdom who makes everything function. Is knowledge a useful thing to have? Nothing is better than wisdom, who has given shape to everything that exists. Do you love justice? All the virtues are the results of wisdom's work. Justice and courage, self-control and understanding. Life can offer us nothing more valuable than these. Do you want to have wide experience? Wisdom knows the lessons of history and anticipates the future. She knows how to interpret what people say and how to solve problems. She knows the miracles that God will perform and how the movements of history will develop. So I decided to take wisdom home to live with me because I knew that she would give me good advice and encourage me in times of trouble and grief. I thought to myself, because of her, I will be honored wherever people come together. The old men will respect me, even though I'm young. They will find that my opinions show deep insight, and those in power will admire me. When I'm silent, they will wait for me to speak, and when I speak, they will pay attention. Even when I speak at length, they will listen with concentration. Because of wisdom, I will gain immortality. I will live forever in the memory of those who come after me. I will hold power over nations and peoples. Dreaded tyrants will be seized with fear at the mention of my name. I will be famous as a good king and a brave soldier. When I come home to wisdom, I will find contentment because there is no conflict or pain in living with her, only happiness and joy. I chose this passage tonight because I want to be clear in what I say. Because of what is going on in our beloved little country, I regularly ask myself whether the majority of our so-called leaders are imbued with wisdom or stupidity. Many who profess to lead seem to be imbued with the eye syndrome and simply fail to realize that they have a duty to the people who look to them for answers. Some are in so, so in love with themselves and their inflated egos that they allow their position to get to their heads the better and the better of them. You can see it in the way they walk and the way they talk, the way they ignore some of the people who were there for them and with them during the campaigning days, not realizing that they will need them again sometime in the future. I'm sure that those who lead this country before, if they were more in search of wisdom instead of their inflated egos, then I'm sure St. Lucia would have been in a better position, both in its development and economically. Maybe this would have kept them in power. As I've said before, I'm not speaking as someone who has never seen experienced life. I have had to stand amidst the chilly winds of adversity and sometimes staggered by the jostling winds of persecution. But I had a faith that one day that has kept me sane that evil will be triumphant and is somehow weaker and right defeated, that the truth across the earth will rise again. So I'm not worried now because my faith in the one true God will keep me going until my time comes to leave this world. This is why I speak in a personal manner, not for anyone or party. I believe in being balanced in what I say. And above all, to be objective. Honesty is still the best policy as far as I'm concerned. Therefore, I'm not against anyone. I believe that our present government should stand up and be counted by listening to the public who are prepared to give them a chance. I believe that the government must surround itself with people of stature who can help to alleviate the hardships that some of our people are going through. The problem is not just one that affects the poor. It affects everyone in the country. 
That is where Solomon's wisdom is so important because it is a guide to the way we go about our life when we become leaders at any level. Remember that what Solomon said thousands of years ago still stands if government leaders adhere to his words, then they will be successful and will stay in power. But we have seen it in Barbados with a complete whitewash, which is unprecedented in Barbadian politics. It is, in my view, not good for democracy. This is not the first time it has happened in the Caribbean. We have seen it twice in Grenada. But Barbados, with its system of government, that should send that should never have happened and should send a message to us all. But the people were fed up with the previous government. Can you believe that? Not even the sitting prime minister was able to secure his seat. Let this be a lesson to all the leaders throughout the Caribbean islands, more so ours. We are still a democracy in St. Lucia and the people must be brought in. Some of the decision-making process. Consensus is always better than being autocratic because you need the people with you because in the end, they will be the ones to decide whether you stay in power or is kicked out. Our voters are sometimes very fickle, so we must not take them for granted. The time has come when the government should become a listening government, even though they seem to be a transparent government. Remember, Prime Minister, that Moses stood in Pharaoh's court, I've said it before, and said aloud to Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh had no choice because God was on the side of his people. I believe that the time has come when the government should come together with the opposition, the civil society, to iron out the problems that the country faces and begin to look for solutions to them instead of the pathetic theater I saw, which was called the Star Wars. This, in my view, was pitiful, and our politics should not be brought to that level. We must not let our party be brought down to the opposition level. This to me is gutter politics. I also believe that the blatant form of patronage that was endemic within the Labour government, for example, cannot continue in this government. And we should cease behaving in that manner. Yes, we have to put a stop to having square pegs in wrong holes if we are to have a developed society, a society we can be proud of, a society that our children can be proud of. For example, I've witnessed a lowering of our academic level by ministers in the last government so that his friend can become eligible for a job that must cease because it is devious and dishonest. The dishonesty of politicians in this country almost borders corruption. Jobs within the public service should be given on merit and experience, and that would also involve their appraisal. Not only that, but positions of director, deputy permanent secretary, permanent secretaries. The first criteria should be one's academic qualifications, experience and suitability in that field, more so public sector experience. Therefore, I say to the UWP government that in their wisdom, they must make a serious effort to address the concerns of some of the electorate. Remember, Prime Minister, that you are supposed to be representing the whole nation and not just some or your party. We cannot behave as the Labour Party did previously. That is why they were literally thrown out. And if they had continued governing for another three months or so, then they would have had been wiped out altogether. Some believe that Labour went too early and had they waited for a few months, the UWP would not have had any money left to fight the election. I don't believe this. The table had already turned for Labour because of bad governance. This is a lesson for the pre this present UWP administration. What I find hard to understand is that is the shenanigans that still exist in the opposition modus operandi. They still have that their mindless followers who cannot say to, to them, enough is enough. Therefore, I say to the government to always remember that our people have very short memories. And therefore, if we don't produce, they will also turn against us. In fact, some of our own will turn against us. And they are beginning to do so, unlike the opposition's followers. So tonight I speak without malice or favor. I'm a humble man who has been on two Taiwanese fellowships. And I'm, a highly, I'm highly qualified. Just as just ask the minister, Sarah Flood Bobre, and the High Commissioner to London. They have the proof. I've been privileged academically because there's no one in the Caribbean who knows about the, that area of the world more than I do. So I speak as someone who, have, who has the age, experience, qualifications to give the advice that I'm now giving to our government. 
In Taiwan, I was highly respected, but they always observed my humility. I believe that this government must do all it can so that there are jobs for everyone and not jobs with the prerequisite that they are supporters of the party as Labour and did in many instances. Prime Minister, I want you to remind you again tonight the love that Christ demonstrated by submitting himself to an agonizing death on a stake or cross, thereby giving his perfect human life as a ransom to save all believing in mankind, has motivated, compelled, and constrained people like me to continue to serve my country and the interests of Christ and the brotherhood of men and women. Does Christ's love control some of us and restrains us from selfishness and confines our aims to the service of God and of our fellow men, not just our country? Indeed, the source of my motivation is Christ's love. When we are faced with trials that can have a debilitating effect on us physically, emotionally, and spiritually, the compelling force of Christ's love enables us to go beyond the point where someone less motivated would give up. It gives us the strength to endure. That is why I stood up on two occasions on our diplomatic relations with Taiwan and the privatization of any of our hospitals. I made sacrifices for that. Some are of the opinion because I did not get a particular job. That is why I spoke out. Not so. If I wanted it so badly, I would have kept my mouth shut like so many do in this country. Prime Minister, the country has endured sufficiently under the previous Labour government. And that the time has come when we must all come together to see what can be done to rescue this pristine land of ours so that we can become the light and pride of the Caribbean, not the light and pride of you the Prime Minister. I'm convinced that we have the people with the ability to make this happen. Just make an effort to use them. I know that you have interest of the country at heart, but please listen to the voices of reason that are crying out in the wilderness. The people believe in you and that you can make a difference. That is why you were voted into power. I fought hard for your victory because I truly believe that you could have made a difference. Now you have to prove it, not just by words, but by deeds and an honesty of heart. My advice to you is not to be upset because one of yours of own criticizes you. It is done to open your eyes and heart because sometimes we are so stressed out that we fail to see the woods from the trees. You must believe in the people who make a difference. Many in this country believe as I do but refuse to speak out. I say this in an outright manner because I ask for no favors. However, what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. Let us be honest with ourselves and with others. The dishonesty that is so prevalent in this society of ours must come to an end. I also want to remind you, Mr. Prime Minister, that no one is an island and that includes you. So I ask the Almighty to bless your government and to give you health and strength to bring us back from the brink of the abyss because the alternative is a recipe for more misery and deprivation. Therefore, use the wisdom that the good Lord has given you and which he gave to Solomon for the good of the country and not for self, family or party, cronies or flatterers. Once again, I want to touch on something that literally had me upset and has now come to an end yesterday. The absence of Taiwan from the World Health Assembly because of China's intransigent. I remember that my heirs were twitching some time ago when the Jamaican Prime Minister came to talk to the UWP faithfuls and at the end of his speech spoke about abor, the Chinese one belt, one road policy. I thought that he was not truthful with the facts in that his country was benefiting in, in their road network project. Yes, he told us that so-called benefits to his country with Chinese help, but failed to tell us that we once saw the colonization of that side of the world by the Europeans. And it was all about building up their country. Today, the Chinese are the colonizers and they are worse than the Europeans. Therefore, what the Jamaican prime minister simply failed to tell his audience, that while there were, there were some positive, positives, the negatives outweigh the positives by a mile. This is now causing serious unrest in his country and which is on the tinter box and can explode at any time because of the attitudes of the Chinese and the cheap competition they present to their small, in, to their small businesses. We don't want this here in St. Lucia, and therefore the PM must stand up 
in the UN and elsewhere and talking about the freedom of 23 million people on the beautiful island we call Taiwan. We must always remember that Chinese foreign policy was proposed by the Chinese President Xi Jinping to build roads, ports, and railways to connect Eurasia. What we are seeing now is the strategy for China is to leverage its economic might to increase its influence beyond Asia. Xi Jinping believes that his country must be the dominant force in the world and we must bow to his whims and fancies. What we must observe is that the state lender the Chinese development of the Chinese Development Bank is granting loans of one U.S. $160 billion to countries involved in the One Belt, One Road policy. The question is why. Yes, sir, what I again want to point out is that the projects which are built for these countries might not be what the host countries need. The cost might be much higher because the financing will be tied to procurement in China and the linkage with the domestic economy might be sparse. Therefore, what bargaining power does St. Lucia have but crown lands? Further, I want to say to him that the Chinese past record of running trade surpluses and exporting manufactured goods in exchange for primary commodities, especially in Africa, is not promising. We are now witnessing a political backlash for China in that elected governments in Sri Lanka and Myanmar wants to repudiate or renegotiate projects approved by their predecessors. However, what we see in Asia and Africa is about buying regional leadership in the quest for hegemony. It is also a stepping stone to China's aspiration of global leadership by creating a rival to transatlantic economic area with the United States at its apex. I therefore hope that by choosing Solomon tonight in order to show the importance of wisdom, that at least those who fail to understand how important it is to those in power should take a leaf out of Solomon's book and emulate him in the search for that wisdom. I will also believe that both government and opposition should come to the realization that the elections ended almost two years ago with defeat of the Labour Party. Therefore, let us work as one nation, one people, until the bell sounds for the next election. I therefore say to both parties to look for guidance from the Holy Spirit and to Jehovah because if they are honest with the people, then Jehovah will send his messengers to assist them. Have faith, my brothers and sisters, because after all, the one most high is the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Lords of Lords. Tonight I say amen, amen, amen. On behalf of Calabash, the television, Station, the admin staff, the technicians, the reporters, and my four children. Denise, who is doing her second year at university. Lovely Daniela, gorgeous Princess Diane. And last, but not least, the Prince himself, Dimitri. I bid you a pleasant weekend in Jehovah. Good night to you all. Good night and good night. <laughs>